This trick is very easy to pull off and you can use it for a bunch of different things like thermal vision goggles or seeing through walls, so let me show you how to do it. I'm doing Blender and let's jump right in. We're gonna be using the light path node, so it's better if we understand what it does. This is how light works in real life. Light is emitted from sources like lamps or the sky and it can be reflected or refracted off of surfaces and it can also go through some materials like glass or this translucent screen. Light also bends when it goes through a material to another one and all of these phenomena change the quality of light before it reaches your eyes. Ray tracing render engines like Cycles are so good because they emulate those light bounces by doing the same thing but in reverse. The camera shoots rays through every pixel of the image and the engine calculates their trajectory. Then it uses that information to determine what the shading of that pixel should be. There are four categories of rays. Camera rays come directly from the camera. Reflection rays are reflected on a surface. Transmission rays go through or have gone through an object. And shadow rays are rays that go through a material that is set up in this way with the object's material connected to the first input of a mixed shader and a transparent shader connected to the other one which will change the color of the shadow that is cast by the object. The light path node allows us to filter out whichever type of ray we want and use that information to change the material depending for example of whether we're looking directly at the object or at its reflection on a mirror. For this exercise we have our simplified human with a very simple two light setup. And by the way I'm gonna leave the finished file in my gumroad for one buck in case you want to follow along. We're going to add a material to it and let's go ahead and add a light path node. We're going to be using the is transmission ray, so go ahead and connect it to the factor of a mix shader node. Now this node will output the second shader whenever we're looking at the object through a transmissive surface and will output the first one otherwise. I'm just gonna plug in two principal shaders, one blue and one yellow, so that we can see the effect right away. Now I'm going to add a plane in front of our human and that's going to be our x-ray machine. Let's add a material to it and I'm just gonna go here to transmission and increase the weight to one. Now we can see through the material and whenever we do that we can see the blue color that we set up in our human material. We can also reduce the roughness to zero if you want, but I'm gonna leave it at 0.1. You can also see the light bending, so if you don't want that you can just reduce the index of refraction to one. If everything looks gray then you just need to make sure that you're in rendered mode by pressing and holding Z, moving the mouse up to highlight rendered and releasing the Z key. Also make sure that you're using cycles as your render engine. So this is the basic principle for our x-ray machine. And now let's build the actual materials. For the normal skin, I'll just leave this material as it is. I'm just gonna change the color to a more uh, skin-like tone. And for the x-ray skin, I'm gonna give it a greenish blue color that you see on real x-rays. Now I want to multiply this color by a noise texture so that it looks more like a real x-ray. You cannot directly multiply the shader, so let's add an RGB. We could just drag and drop this color here. Now we add a noise texture. Control shift, right click and drag. We got the mix node. We set this to multiply. Connect this here. Factor all the way up. Increase the scale to whatever you like, I'm gonna leave it at, I don't know, somewhere around 10. And you'll see that it's being stretched, so select it, Control t and change this to Object. When I'm gonna increase the detail to 5, and I probably want a color ramp to have a little bit more control, so I'm gonna add it right here. Maybe change this to gray, and I think that's it. Now we need the skin to be transmissive because we want to see the skeleton that's inside. So we can just increase the transmission weight all the way to one, but I actually want to make the edges a little bit less transparent. So let's add a layer weight node, connect the facing socket here to the weight. Now we can of course change the blend, but we're getting the exact opposite result to what we want. We're now getting the transparency in the edges, and we want to change that. So let's invert, color, plug it here. And to give it just that little bit extra oomph, I'm going to connect a new noise texture. I'm also going to use the same mapping as the other one. I'm going to reset the values. You can do that by selecting the node and pressing backspace and it returns to the default values of the node. I'm going to connect this to a map range node and I'm going to connect that to the index of refraction. This of course is not what we want, so we're going to set the 2 min to something like 1.2 and the 2 max to something like 1.5. And I think that's really starting to look like an X-ray. Okay, so far this is our node tree for the material of the human. You'll see that all of the magic is going on right here. Now we need a skeleton. I downloaded this one from BlendSwap for free and I'm gonna leave the link in the description if you want to use it and I also included it on my Gumroad file. Now we're gonna place the skeleton inside the human. Now just make sure that no bones are sticking out. I'm gonna go to wireframe so that you can see that it's actually inside there. We just don't want any bones showing outside of the skin because... 
Well, that would be kind of scary. Now, you'll see that all the bones have the same material that I just called X-ray. Now, if I go to shading, you'll see that it's a very simple glass material. I changed the roughness to around 0.7 and the index of refraction to 0.5, and you can change these numbers to your liking. And the reason why I'm using glass or something transparent is that in the X-rays, you can actually see through the bones. And also, when we add the lighting to the bones, glass looks actually very cool. And now, at this point, we can barely see the bones because since they are inside the body, they're not lit. It's completely dark inside. So we need to add a few lights for the bones. So let's go ahead and add a point light. And now, of course, if we put it outside of the body, it will not light the bones because this material is not transparent. So we need to actually put it inside the body. And now we can start seeing the bones. So let's do a couple of things here. The first thing is we're going to reduce the power of the light because this is way too bright. So change that to 1.5 or something around there. Now you'll see that the bones are also getting this orange tone, and that's because the light is bouncing off of the skin, and that color is being picked up by the bones. So we want the light to affect only the bones and not the skin. So to do that, I've put all of the bones in one collection. So let's go to the object properties menu right here, scroll down to shading, and light linking. Here, since we've already created the bones collection, you can just select it from the drop down menu. Now you'll see that that orange tone is reduced, but we still have it there. And the reason is because the light is actually bouncing off of the bones to the skin and then back to the bones. And here is just going to be a matter of where we place the light and how powerful the light is. So I want to place the light in the middle of the rib cage, something like that, and that should work. I want to reduce the power to 1.2. If you're still getting too much of the skin hue, you can go here to the data properties of the light and reduce the max bounces to something like 3. And that way we're preventing the light to bounce off of the skin and give that orange hue to the bones. And just make sure that it looks good to you. Now, the other thing that we can do, sometimes you want to put the light outside of the body to get the exact visual quality that you're looking for, and then what you can do is select the light and uncheck cast shadow. You're not only lighting the bones now, but because we used the light linking, this lamp is not lighting the skin. So now you have more flexibility as of where you place the lights. I'm going to place a few more lights and then come back. So this is how it looks. All of my bones are well lit. So just for you to know, I ended up leaving one inside the skull, one inside the rib cage, a couple in front of the wrists, and a couple in front of the thighs, very close to the knees. And one on the pee-pee area, or the pelvic area, if you're a grown-up, and I think it looks pretty good. Now, if your bones are looking very blurry, let's go back to the shading workspace, and you can always change the roughness of the material. So if we drag this all the way to zero, you'll see that well, all of the bones are completely visible. So just try to adjust it to get the exact quality that you want. Now, of course, one thing to note is that all of the bones that are closer to the skin will look less blurry than the bones that are further away from the skin. And the reason is that for Blender, all of this is material that the light has to go through. So in this example, the pelvis will always look more blurry than these ribs that are very, very close to the skin. And now, finally, to get the black color of the plate, I'm just quickly going to add a lab image for the background to keep it simple. And now to create the black background that should only be visible when we're looking through the x-ray machine, you might have already guessed that we're just going to use the exact same trick that we used before. So let's add a plane in front of the background and give it a material. Okay, let's go to the shading workspace. Now, since we want it to be visible only when we're looking at it through the x-ray machine, we're going to use a very similar setup to what we did with the skin of the human. All right, so with our plane selected, let's change the color to black, roughness 1, duplicate this, control shift, right click and drag to create the mix shader node, and shift A, light path. And again, we connect the is transmission rate to the factor. And now we just set the alpha to zero on the first one and we're done. And just to give it a little bit more pizzazz, I added this simple metallic outline to our x-ray machine. And now we are done. I'm doing Blender, happy blending.